I've just gone quarter to nine. This is the subject I'm slightly scared of, to be honest. Um, big news story overnight. Uh, BT, um, giant has decided to cut 55,000 jobs by the end of the decade with up to a fifth being replaced by AI. Now, apparently, according to Sunak, new regulation may be needed to tackle artificial intelligence, he's admitted, in a signal that this government, a uh, more cautious approach to technology, delighted to be joined now by Andrew Eben, or Eborn, intellectual property, media and technology <gasps> lawyer and futurist. Imagine growing up and being a futurist. Uh, Andrew, welcome to uh, Breakfast. How are you? What does that mean? It's an absolute pleasure to join you, Jeremy. It's a, a, a real honour. Nice to see you. What, what does futurist mean? Is it because you're wearing a jacket that we haven't it seen? It is. It's a jacket from the future. I thought that would brighten up your, your glorious morning. Put your sunglasses on. Uh, so futurist, what it basically means, we look at patterns in history and predict what's going to happen uh, in the future. People always say history repeats itself, and I say the reason it repeats itself is because we don't learn the lessons from history. But what I also do, I travel around the world talking about new technology and the seismic changes that are going to come uh, as a result of it. Um, and that's what we do. We, we work with companies and advise them to all of these very, very predictable changes. And Goldman Sachs actually warned that 300 million jobs will be lost to AI and robotics. And it's understanding what the opportunities are and also uh, the risks involved. And that's where Sunak is coming out uh, today and a number of other people have spoken very recently about the dangers of AI and the need for regulation. Um, just in layman's terms, imagine I'm so blinded by your jacket that I can't hear or see anything. And I'm on, a, on a serious note, um, if you look at the top line, you go, at the end of the decade, BT gets rid of 55,000 jobs, replaces them by 10,000 robots. So two sides to the argument. The first argument is, I understand a company wanting to make their profits, maximise their profits for themselves and their shareholders by making their business more competitive. But of course, that sends a, a worrying fear amongst the working community, which is already on its backside in this country, which is what's going to happen. Do we need to steer a middle course? We're going to have to embrace technology. That has happened forever. What's your message to people sort of listening to this and not really understanding and not also wanting to panic people, to be fair? I, I think certainly don't panic. It's a tremendous opportunity throughout history. And as I say, as a futurist, that's what you look at. It's ever since the invention of the printing press, people have been concerned about losing jobs and so on and so forth. What we need to recognise is that artificial intelligence can do everything that a human can do from creativity we had uh, very recently the drake and the weekend there was a, a collaboration that went around the world and people were amazed millions of streams and it turned out that, that was actually created by ai we had an interview with michael schumacher in a german magazine fairly scandalous actually because again that was created by ai and so on and so forth we had uh, very recently the pope you might remember seeing the Pope in a white puffer jacket. Uh, again, it went viral around the world. And people sort of say, well, the devil uh, uh, the devil loves Prada, but the, the Pope prefers puffer. Uh, and again, that was created by artificial intelligence. So what's happening is that everything we see, read, hear, or watch, uh, apart from obviously on talk TV, uh, you need to question everything. What's going to happen is going to infiltrate every single aspect of our lives. Uh, is, Sunak's, is Sunak's cautious approach uh, a policy designed at trying to slow things down in terms of what people might fear is going to happen? And a lot of people have called about that on that. And basically, Stephen Hawking said that it's our greatest human achievement, but also potentially our biggest existential threat. So what we need to do is I would err on the side of caution. Certainly there needs to be regulations in place. We need to look at what happens from a copyright point of view, because obviously AI is now churning out fantastic works uh, on an incredibly fast basis. But over-regulation, I think, would be a mistake. Yeah. And Bill Gates says, look, if we stop, and some people have called for a six-month hiatus, uh, if we stop, then other countries like China and so on and so forth are not going to stop, and they're going to overtake us. And your father-in-law, you mentioned your father-in-law and the Boy Scouts earlier. Well, actually, he's got a lovely quote from uh, Google's uh, European president, Matt Britton, who warned about the, uh, the dangers of overregulation? What he said, uh, he said, a fork is technology, and I can use it to eat spaghetti or I can stab you in the hand. We do not regulate forks, but there are consequences if you go and stab someone. So I think that's the right approach. Your father-in-law would like that. I, I like I that, but he is, sort of he is in the European Union, so we don't give a damn. Um, you're astonishing. <laughs> Andrew Ebon, you make me feel like I've... I mean, I actually feel like I've learned something. But essentially, here's one thing, very quickly. We're talking, about the, we're talking about BT. You know, all that we hear about how crap the NHS is or how, you know, crap the, the civil service is, there will be people going, actually, maybe AI could improve these... You can't oh, get a passport, you can't get a... 
Andrew, you thing. are so right. You are so right. And that's what I've been advocating for a long time. All the people going on strike, all you're going to do is basically accelerate the use of technology, the use of robots. And very recently, a brilliant article in The Times talked about a survey which said that chat GPT, terrible name, chat GPT, was better than GPs for giving empathy for giving proper answers and so on and so forth. I mean, you wouldn't have to deal with a miserable... 24 /7. You wouldn't have to deal with a miserable reception. I've got no appointments, phone back in three months. Listen, listen to me. Do you know George in Birmingham? Absolutely. George in Birmingham is a brilliant, brilliant... Contributor. Morning, Jez. Another cracking show. I saw a hidden message in that dazzling jacket worn by Andrew. It said, don't trust politicians. That man is from the future on topic. He's absolutely right. People said that the internet wouldn't change anything and it changed the whole goddamn world. AI will be a game changer. Embrace it. Have a great weekend. Andrew's the man. Thank you, George. We love George. And you have the best listeners, the best watchers. I love it. And no wonder your, your ratings are going through the roof. You're very kind. Not mine. Uh, thank you for tuning in. You're a legend. Thank you very much to Andrew Ebon. It made me feel like I knew what I was talking about.